Okay, so maybe you should start. Uh, it's good to see so many people in the in the room already. Um, so I prepared a little introduction for this workshop. Welcome everybody. We are uh, four members of a uh, group for neuro theory in, in Paris. We work with the uh, surgeon Ostrich. And uh, so today we are gonna uh, have the chance to talk about the dimensionality of, uh, of uh, neural activity. Uh, so when, if one would have to decide which code to use uh, for some uh, representation, one would be faced with this uh, trade-off between using a high dimensional code or, or a low dimensional code. So when one uh, uses a low dimensional code, this gets you uh, uh, robust codes and generalizable codes. However, just along um, whatever axis you group your, your, your representations uh, um, around. So for example, here, it's very well generalizable for context, but not for any other uh, possible combination you can think of with these uh, four conditions. On the other hand, if you use a high dimensional code, if you, if you, if you uh, have each condition um, organized in a way that's uh, uh, as high dimensional as possible, then uh, you will not be able to generalize, but a, a, a downstream area can read out any possible combination. So you could, for example, decode A from C or even plus from minus and so on. So there is this trade-off and of course, there, this is just the extremes and uh, there is a whole spectrum of representations in between and the question is uh, uh, where, where does the brain stand or where does evolution uh, 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 let the brain. Um, so this is not only theoretical, there is, it seems to be a lot of evidence for uh, low dimensional dynamics in the brain. Um, so in this very nice paper uh, by Gao uh, Ganguly et al, they, they, they reviewed uh, in this figure, uh, the, the, the current evidence in the field, and in particular, they, they, they plot uh, the ratio between the estimated dimensionality and uh, the number of recorded neurons. And you can see that the, the number is much lower than, than one. So it means that dimensionality is uh, much lower than, than the number of recorded neurons and let alone the number of neurons in the brain. And this is, even, this is the case even for uh, uh, the, examples where the estimated, uh, where, where, the, where the explained variance was actually very, very high, okay? So at, at, this, at this point, it's, it seemed that uh, the, there is uh, striking evidence for, for low, dimensional, uh, um, low dimensional dynamics in, in the brain. However, as it was acknowledged in this paper, uh, this might reflect the bias in the field of using um, uh, simple tasks so, for example, when one trains a monkey to solve a task, one can decide to, to, to the monkey to solve this very simple task, where it's just to reach uh, uh, a target, and while recording for a given uh, period the activity of of of, uh, of of its brain, and and then what what, what would, would be reflected in neural activity is of course the the, the time passing by, but also uh, this will be just one trajectory because the monkey is just performing a reach to one single target. But if one decides to use a more complex task, for example, one where the monkey has to, to reach in all possible directions, then of course, these reaching angles must, must be reflected, uh, they, they must be reflected in the neural activity. And so this will uh, uh, expand the, the dimensionality that, uh, uh, that the neural activity is, is occupying. So you will, you will increase the dimensionality by increasing the complexity of this task. Uh, unfortunately, there is not much evidence for this uh, in, in the brains, as far as I know yet, uh, but there is, evidence in artificial neural networks by this paper by Friedrich Schussler, who is a speaker uh, today. He trained uh, networks, uh, recurrent neural networks to solve tasks of increasing complexity. And he found out that you, you, that these networks uh, need uh, high and higher uh, uh, space. So the, the dynamics sp span high and higher space uh, to solve uh, these more and more complex uh, tasks to, to be seen in, in real brains. But the, not, not everything is about uh, low dimensional. Uh, the, the evidence, there's, there's evidence for high dimensional representations actually in both biological and artificial networks. Uh, one example of, of, of such cases is uh, this paper by Carson Stringer, another speaker uh, with us today, uh, where they record from visual cortex while mice were seeing uh, uh, images, several images. And they found out that when they showed 32 images, uh, uh, the, the, so the space occupied by, by the vectors, each of them, representing each of these images was of 32 dimensions. But if they increase the number of images that they show the animals, the, this space was also getting larger and larger. So they, they, they got up to almost 3,000 images and, and they saw almost 3,000 uh, uh, dimensions of this neural space. And there is also evidence for high dimensional dimensionality in cerebellum. In this uh, uh, study where uh, uh, Alex Kaiko, another speaker here today, Alex Kaiko and, and colleagues, 
um, uh, estimated the dimensionality of representations in the cerebellum, and they found out to be uh, uh, very sparse. So they, they found that uh, the dimensionality is is, uh, is very high, and 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 the, there seems to be a ratio between the number of neurons and the, the dimensionality. So as they increase the number of neurons, they estimated more and more dimensions, and and this ratio seems to be very low of five neurons uh, per dimension. So this code is very sparse and, and not low dimensional. Um, and finally, there is evidence also from artificial neural networks. Uh, for example, uh, in this study by Su Yong Chung and colleagues, uh, Su Yong is also a speaker with us today. They found that uh, artificial neural networks uh, uh, use this expan expansion of dimensionality to, to better classify uh, images. Uh, as you go further in, in, the, in, in, the, in the layers, at least for initial layers, there is an expansion of, of the dimensionality um, used by these networks. Okay, so this was a very quick uh, tour of what we might be talk about today. Uh, and so at this point, it seems that there is this contradiction of uh, well, both a theoretical contradiction and an empirical uh, uh, and a contradiction at the empirical uh, level. So we, we thought that bringing all these people together and, and also you in the audience will be able to, to find a way of reconciling this, these contradictions. And so I will just give you two possible avenues. Of course, you can ignore and propose your own points of view as we go through the workshop. So one way is that maybe we can wrap up all this evidence as, and, and, and see that uh, what is high dimensional is the representations, how the brain represents different images, for example, or, or artificial neural networks. But then when the brain uses these high dimensional representations to, to solve a task, uh, it, it, it will use low dimensional uh, dynamics. So um, when the brain performs computations on these representations, in the end, you, what it needs to do is to, is to uh, have a behavioral output uh, and, and after all, uh, uh, there's only an, a limited number of muscles, and, and this number is much, much lower than the number of neurons. So there has to be a collapse of, of dimensionality at some point. So just a, maybe a, a philosophical uh, perspective, but the, we can, one can also uh, uh, think about some methodological uh, uh, issues. So maybe um, it will be a, people need to be more clear in which dimensionality it is, is being estimated, if it's intrinsic dimensionality or embedded dimensionality. And I think this cartoon. Uh, exemplifies very well uh, 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 this, this, this distinction. So for example, if the brain is using uh, a, 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 a code, a ring code, uh, so a ring can be defined just by one variable, so the intrinsic dimensionality is, is of one. But if one would be using PCA or another linear method, one would be estimated uh, the dimensionality to be of two, so the embedded dimensionality could be of two. And so this discrepancy can be even more dramatic if if there is some small distortions in this representation, as one would expect to, to happen in, in biological systems. And so even though it's still, this is still a, a ring and can be exp, uh, represented just by one variable, so the intrinsic dimensionality is one, you would get uh, an embedded dimensionality of even, even higher. Okay, so, so th that was uh, just a, a, a short introduction. We'll, we'll now go into the real thing. So we have uh, really, uh, we feel really privileged to have this great lineup uh, we, we group uh, the speakers in three broad sessions. So the first session is going to be broadly defined uh, about decision making and how these concepts apply uh, into decision making. And, and this session is going to be moderated by Adrian uh, Valente. And then we'll have a, a session on, on artificial neural networks. And again, how these concepts uh, are relevant there too. And this session will be uh, um, moderated by Levitza. And then we have a, a, um, uh, finally a session about model learning which will be moderated by, by Yushu. So in the first two sessions, there will be uh, 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 some wrap up uh, time and, and, or a break where we can uh, keep discussion, discussing or answering questions that were not answered during the talk. Each speaker will have uh, for, for at their disposal uh, 30 minutes and at 30 minutes will be uh, as ruthless as possible to, to, to close the, the, the mic. Uh, so yeah, you can ask questions during the talk and we'll try to read them or you can ask tech questions at the end of each of the talk or even at the, at the wrap-up session. And finally, we'll have a, a panel discussion where we invite everybody in the audience and, and the speakers to, to come join us and, and discuss uh, uh, yeah, these topics. And without further ado, I'll pass the mic to Adrian and I'll try